Hey guys! In today's video, we're going to be working with Robinhood portfolio data in Python. So this is part of my Python and crypto slash doc series, and we're going to be taking, using Python, we're going to be taking our Robinhood portfolio data, and then we'll just see how much money we have in our portfolio using Python. So let's get into the video. First of all, I'm going to introduce, first of all, what Robinhood is and crypto. Even though Robinhood is more of a stocks app, I'm going to be using crypto for it. Then we're going to see what we're going to do in the demo. Then we'll get straight into the demo, in which, first of all, we'll just do the setup and checking our portfolio in Robinhood. Then, using Python, we're going to connect to the portfolio. Then we'll get the actual price or how much we have in the portfolio. Then we'll print it. And then finally, just so that we can use it in future projects, which I will be using this kind of thing in future projects, we're going to convert it into a function. So let's get into it. First of all, what is Robinhood? Well, Robinhood, just like I've made another video in my crypto series, which was Coinbase, just like that, Robinhood is another financial investing, financial investing company, but instead of just crypto, it focuses on all types of stocks and crypto. Now, stocks are just like a certain share of the company that you can buy for profits, but so is crypto. And again, with Robinhood, it's a kind of storage for your crypto and stocks where you can invest, trade, and sell stocks and crypto. And yes, this is a very big financial investing platform. So next up, what is cryptocurrency? Because today's video is going to be centered mainly about Robinhood's cryptocurrency fu function. So basically, people have trust in value, and that's how money gets its value. But now what if you could t turn that trust into digital? Now, instead of having paper money like we do right now, we can just turn that digital. Now, what's the advantage of this? Well, cryptocurrency is decentralized, which means that the government doesn't run it and there's no backing from the government, which means that it has very less chance to be corrupted and the people run it. One very big example of a decentralized currency is Bitcoin, and this is completely digital. Now, in the year of 2021, there's a bunch of cryptocurrencies that many people invest in. And like I said, Robinhood is one very big cryptocurrency investing platform. So now that you know what Robinhood and cryptocurrency is, what are we going to do with these? And how are we going to connect it to Python in the demo? So first of all, what are we going to do in the demo? Well, first of all, I'm going to do the setup and we're going to like look at our Robinhood portfolio. Then we'll actually get the price using all of our variables and how to get the data and extract just the price of what we need. Then we'll first of all print it on the terminal and then finally we'll make it a function so that we can use it in later uses. So let's get into the demo in which we're going to be working with Robinhood in Python. All right, so the first thing I need to do is actually go to Atom so that we can actually work with Robinhood. So here I have my getData.py, and then this is what I'm going to be using so that we can actually code this. So the first thing we need to do is import all of our modules. So the first thing I'm going to import is our credentials. So let's, before we get into that, before we get into the coding, I'm actually going to go to Robinhood so that we can see it. So there's a, a mobile app if you want to get it on your phone or device, and then you can create an account there. Or if you want to do it on the computer, then it's just Robinhood.com. And then you'll have to sign into your account, obviously, or create an account if you don't have one. And then after that, you can get your, you can just get straight to your portfolio. So as you can see, right now, I don't have much in crypto or in stocks, but right now I have $6.70. So that's my portfolio right now. And if I wanted to, like Robinhood has, you can trade, buy, and sell stocks and crypto. But I'm just going to keep it how it is right now because what we're doing is we're going to, in Python, we're going to see how much we have, which should be $6.70. So the first thing we need to do is import our modules. So I'm going to import Robin stocks docs.robinhood, which is one of our modules, and then we're going to import it as Robin because I don't want to keep on saying this over and over again. So import Robin stocks.robinhood as Robin, just so that we can get our Robinhood, just so that we can get access to our Robinhood account. Then we're going to need some sign-in credentials because you there's obviously going to need to be some security measures. I can't just sign into anyone's account. So to do this, I need to have my username and password that I used to log into our Robinhood. 
and I'm going to have that in a separate configuration file. So I can, you can see I have it right here in credentials.py, but I'm obviously not going to show that. But this is a sample of what it should look like. So I have a variable in my credentials.py, rhlogin and rhpassword. So the login will have your username and then the password should have your password. And then if you enter those the same as what you logged into Robinhood with, then you can use these credentials to actually get your data using Python. So now since I have it in credentials.py, I'm obviously not going to open that. I'm going to import that as a config file. So I'm going to say import credentials. And you have to make sure whenever you make your config file, you have to make sure it's a Python. You can't just like do it as a text file. You have to make sure it's in Python. So then you can just say import credentials and then it should work. Now all of the variables that are in credentials.py, you can use that in get data.py. That's pretty neat. Then after that, for the setup, I'm going to make two variables. So the first variable I'm going to create is called login. And then this login variable, what we're going to do with this is we're going to use our credentials that we have to like, first of all, we're going to connect to Robinhood.com. And then with that connection, we're going to enter our login credentials. And then it should have full access to our account now. And then with that access, we can do whatever we want. So in the login variable, I'm going to say Robin, which is our variable to connect to Robinhood dot login and then this login function is a function in Robinhood that will let us use our credential login credentials to log in. So now I'm going to say credentials which is our Python file with which has our username and password. So I'm going to say credentials dot and then the variable which is the login. So I'm going to say rh login which is one of the variables. So rh login and then next parameter we need to provide is credentials dot rh pass and then whenever we want to get a variable from a different from our config file we have to say credentials dot and then we have uh, whatever variable we want so the next variable is rh pass and then that those are the two par parameters we need to provide which have our username and our password then with this username and password we need to provide one last parameter if we want to so store the session and in this case, I'm going to put it as true because I do want to do that. True. All right, so there we go. Now that we have our first parameter covered, which is the login variable, now we should have most of the access to our account. And in terminal, it, since I've configured my account, my Robinhood account to be pretty secure, in terminal now it should ask me, um, it should send an SMS notification, and then with that notification, it should get like a little code, and then I'll have access to the account. But yeah, so now we have the access to our account. But now with that access, now we want to load all of the data that's correlated with our account so that we can actually use them. Just having access isn't enough. We need to get the data. So to do that, I'm going to create another variable. I'll just call this variable data. And then we're going to say Robin because Robin is our what we've imported. And then Robin dot. And then we have another f function here, load Phoenix account, Phoenix account. And then this will load all of the data correlated with the account that we just configured right here. So load Phoenix account. And then since that's a function, we need parentheses. And then boom, that's all of the set of variables that we need to do. So here we've, right now we've logged in, we've logged into our Robinhood account using our credentials, and then we've stored the session, and now we've loaded all of the data. So now with that data, let's just, first of all, just to test this out, let's just print it out. Now we should have a bunch of raw data that's just correlated with our Robinhood account. So to run this in Atom, I'm just going to press this button, and then let's run this. So here to run our code, I'm just going to say Python 3 and then whatever our file name is. In this case, my file name is getdata.py. So getdata.py. And obviously, before we run it, actually, you're going to have to pip install your modules. So I've already pip installed this. But to pip install, what we need to do is pip through install. And then you would pip install your module. So in this case, it would be Robinhood. But I've already done that. So after that, we're just going to say Python 3 and then our file name. So this is get data.py and then we're just going to run it. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of stuff. Oh, this is a lot of data. So here we have our, okay, let's just try to interpret this. Okay. Let me just go up. 
Okay, there's a lot of data here. So we have currency code, which is US dollars for a bunch of different things. And then here you can see it just goes on for a long time with a bunch of data. So now we want to extract that data and we only want to get what we want, which is just the total amount of money that we have. So to do that, we need to, let's just not print this. And then for printing, okay, let's change this. And then we're gonna make a variable. So let's call this final data. And then this final data will be equal to what we have as the data variable. This is all of that raw data that we printed out before, but now we want to extract certain parts of it. And to extract certain parts of it, we can index it because like I showed you, there is a bunch of data separated by a comma. So we can index that as if it's a, it was an array. So if I did data and then what we want, let me go back and run it again, actually. Python 3, get data.py. So if you see portfolio equity, it's somewhere up here. It's one of these total equity, portfolio equity, you can see in there. So if we index it by the portfolio equity, that's just the amount of money that is totaled. So if we say portfolio equity, and then we want to index that again by the amount because in portfolio equity, I'm sure there's multiple other things. So then after portfolio equity, we want to index that again by the amount. So then after that, we'll have the total amount of money that's in our portfolio account, which in this case, if we see it's $6.70. So let's just check this by printing it. So let's say print and then final data. Or you know what, just to make it even fancier, let's just say total, total data is, and then we're gonna have our final data. And then since I've already logged in, it's not going to ask me for any verification, but normally it would ask you for verification. All right, so let's save this, and then finally, let's run it. So we have Python 3, and then Robin, or no, let's get data.py. Right here, total data is 6.7. So there we go, we have that. So as you can see, we have our total data is 6.7, and even if I bought or sold any stocks and then reran the program, then it would still work. So as you can see, we have our total data is 6.7, and then that matches to what we have in Robinhood. So there we go. It's connected to our Robinhood account, and then it indexes by the portfolio equity and the amount of money, which just gets the total amount of money that we have in our portfolio with stocks or crypto. So there we go. That's connecting Robinhood to Python. One last thing we can do is, just so that for future reference, since I'm going to be using this code in the future, I'm going to be making this into a function just for now. And then instead of printing this, I'm going to, okay, instead of printing this, I'm gonna return it since this is going to be a function. So return total data and then final data. Actually, let's keep the parentheses. Okay, so there we go. And then let's make it a function by saying define and then let's say, let's call the function get Robin Hood total. And then we want the parameter to be test. And then there we go. So now we've created a function that has all of this. So now, for example, if this were to be a Python program, and then if I like wanted to say, if I wanted to run the, uh, the function, then I would say get Robin Hood total. Let me just copy this. Then I would say get Robin Hood total. And then as the test variable, we would just have whatever parameter we want. So there's that. And then it would run the program, and then it would run the function, and then it would return the total data with the final data. So there we go. That's how to connect Robinhood to Python. So that was working with Robinhood in Python. And this was just one of the videos that's part of my crypto series in Python. So I'm going to have much more videos coming out soon. So stay tuned for those. Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any Robinhood Python questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.